today, and now we get a monthly number wang too. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, the ABS released their first monthly consumer price index indicator today, and they reported that the CPI rose 7% in the year to July and 6.8% to August, according to the latest from the ABS. The A said the information released today provides an early indication of September quarter CPI inflation that will be published on the 26th of October. The new monthly CPI indicator will also be released on the 26th of October and will include data up to the month of September. And they went on to say the monthly CPI indicator saw annual inflation of 6.8% in August compared to 7% in July and 6.8% in June. The largest contributors in the 12 months to August were new dwelling construction up 20.7% and automotive fuel up 15%. The slight fall in the annual inflation rate from July to August was mainly due to a decrease in prices for automotive fuel. This saw the annual movement for automotive fuel fall from 43.3% in June to 15% in August. Food and non-alcoholic beverage inflation increased to 9.3% in the 12 months to August, with prices rising across most food categories, led by fruit and vegetables, increasing from 9.1% in June to 18.6% in August. The monthly CPI indicator excluding volatile items of fruit, vegetables and fuel increased from an annual rise of 5.5% in June to 6.2% in August, so that preliminary information would suggest the RBA has still got more heavy lifting to do. And they went on to say that, as outlined in the information paper introducing the monthly CPI indicator, the ABS has incorporated a new rents data series, which is updated on a monthly rather than quarterly basis. And it should also be noted that the monthly CPI indicator may be routinely subject to revision, in contrast to the quarterly CPI, which is only revised in exceptional circumstances. Now, let me just talk about this rent thing for a minute, because, of course, there's this massive gap between the rental CPI, as reported by the ABS, which includes all rents, and the asking rents, reported, for example, by CoreLogic and other players, that is a much stronger measure. The point there, of course, is that the rental series is highly delayed, which means that there's a whole lot more CPI coming through from the rental sector ahead as rents are reset and as people move to new rental accommodation on a higher rate. And I guess the other point to ask is, is more frequent information that helpful, really, given, of course, there's a lot of volatility in the numbers at the moment. Clearly, the rise now in petrol, because the excise duty removed, will be on the upside rather than the downside. And given the international situation with regard to, for example, gas prices, there are other upward pressures which will flow into the CPI head. So my expectation is that we'll end up with a core CPI above 7% probably. And I still think the RBA has got to lift by at least 50 basis points next month and uh, keep at it. Because of course, without lifting interest rates, inflation won't come back under control. And I'll leave you with this rather worrisome thought. If you really want to crush inflation, you need an interest rate that's actually higher than the inflation rate, which means that we're looking at a cash rate of 6 to 7% if we're really serious about it. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.